Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet and of YouTube, welcome to Jibber Jabber. As always, I am your host, Skajaramas, otherwise known as Tone Shift. Kind of a small assembly of guests today, but I mean, eh, kind of a hectic morning this has been. So, joining me to just talk about ship for a while, we've got Paladin57. Eh. Uh, Tom117C, author of Change... Uh, and also co-author on many uh, of the Idiocyverse stories, of which there is a new one up on filmfiction.net. Just went up as we're recording this, so go have a look. Uh, Tom, 117Z. Two Chrissies, one fluff. Enough said. Yep. And then lastly, we've got the author of Human Nature and their very own sons and a friend of mine, Blank Page. Hey, all. All right, so how's everyone's week been, eh? <laughs> Tiring. Good. That is Easter. <laughs> I just looked up my next week. It's going to be even more tiring. <laughs> oh, boy. That <laughs> sounds magnificent. <laughs> yes. Which I'm probably not going to make the next Jibber Jabber. Oh, boy. Oh, I, I won't be at Jibber Jabber next week either. Oh, boy. That's... Well, this is probably a bad point to say I won't either. <laughs> 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 I got work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to have access to a computer next weekend, so... Does that, that mean that... Uh, and I don't know about Hades, and I don't know about Neff, so there just might not be any fucking jibber-jabber next week. Okay. Not host yeah. yourself. Just start, just start talking to a mic. There you go. That's your plan right there. No. Hey, you could always do, yeah. a, do a reading instead. I also need to ask you a favor for next weekend, Tone, though we'll talk about that after jibber-jabber. Okay. Oh, excuse me. So, yeah. I don't have a planned topic for this jibber jabber we just kind of i've been focusing on something else for the last three hours so i didn't get a chance to think about well, what should we talk about today it's just like oh shit it's 10 minutes until jibber jabber come on turn off this <laughs> well, back you know how these things off <laughs> love off his life and priority <laughs> time to get off of do not disturb mode it's time to go do this podcast-esque type thing that mm -hmm. i do each week <laughs> yeah. so who all here has seen the season eight premiere yes i have not so, so little Jimmy, how did your favorite kids show start? Oh, you know, someone was racist to world leaders and almost started World War One. You know, usual. <laughs> well, since it seems as though Blank and Paladin have not seen the premiere yet, we're just going to have to shut up about it. Yes, I just had to say that because I'm... <laughs> My God. So we can't talk about the season eight premiere yet. I mean, you well, technically can, can I don't mind. Neither do but, I. But we do, so. <laughs> that one time you care about spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> spoilers, Jesus dies. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't get to that part yet. <laughs> spoilers, America was founded. <laughs> we know spoilers, we're all here. And then they fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, America wouldn't be founded. Where would we be doing this podcast? A, a, a colony of England? <laughs> <laughs> I actually can see that. <laughs> Everybody here's just got a British accent. I say, good chap, shoot me first. Much kind of you, good chap. Pow! <laughs> oh, poor Tom. <laughs> I wasn't trying to do a good British accent there. I was being deliberately as cheesy as possible. So if we're barred from talking about the season eight finale, or start season eight premiere rather, even though it's our topic right now, how shall we start this monstrosity? <laughs> well, we just started it. <laughs> hmm. Let's keep the ball going. <laughs> <gasps> what ball? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I I don't I I I don't fucking know. I mean, I've been writing in little choices and interesting's getting and shit's getting interesting there, so. Yeah, I'm just improvising mm -hmm. on top of my head, so... Just make shit up. <laughs> exactly. I'm just adding groups to the story, currently. <laughs> great, great evil minds think alike. Yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So, in the... So, might as well just do a bit of advertising, why not? So, since it just happened... Tom one one seven Z and I just wrote, but just before we sat down to record the session of Jibber Jabber, a new entry in the idiocy verse, and this story is called Two Chrissies One Fluff, and yes, that is a parody of Two Girls One Cup. 
No, man, I'm really glad you laid that out for me. I didn't get it at first. <laughs> Not everyone's going to get it. That old, that meme's kind of old at this point. Yeah, but I think that's why they'll all get it. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I don't know either. So. Yeah, well, anyways, um, and the basic idea is that in true fashion of the ADC verse, Discord and Discord Dose decide because why the fuck not to just do a thing, and in this case, they take Chrysalis from the Bug in the Herd and Chrysalis from Change. And put them both in the same library as Flufflepuff while taking Flufflepuff's chrysalis and just chucking out into space for the time being. <laughs> oh and poor Chrysalis will never get to finish that game of chess. <laughs> <laughs> Every single time Discord and Discord Dose decide to do a thing with the chrysalis and the change verse, they just pluck her from that damn chess game with Twilight. It seems to be a decent enough point to go to. Not a lot's going on. Her mind isn't too frazzled. She's just trying to focus on a chess game and suddenly everything's crazy. Like, what the fuck is going on? She was losing anyway. It's fine. <laughs> Not that she'll ever admit it. <laughs> and and the version of Chrysalis from the Bug and the Hurt that they got was actually after she went and did the metamorphosis thing. So, she looks different this time. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's kind of weird. It's like, the Chrysalis who's closer to canon show personality is the one who's undergone the metamorphosis that says, I'm nice now. While the one who's like allies with Equestria in, you know, in, in her own setting still looks like the more traditional intimidating changeling. Kind of and an interesting... always will. Kind of, yeah, she kind of died. Kind of an interesting mm -hmm. parallel there. <laughs> one dies and one changes. One, yeah. di one died and the other went to take a pony's virginity. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Christmas would be ecstatic to know that her oh. rival does not live beyond that year. It's <laughs> funny, one, one Christmas asks the other, how's your life been? It ends <laughs> next week. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get shanked several times and your leg blown off. Enjoy. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I get the feeling we're just making references that no one in the audience understands. If they don't understand it, go read Change, then you will understand all. Or listen to my or reading of Change. Reading. Because, yeah, because that I... Too. Uh, and, of course, Bug in the Herd, that's also kind of required reading for, mm -hmm. for a lot of the jokes in this damn setting. And At this point, the ADC verse is more like just a string of inside jokes than anything else. Yeah, it really is. Well, I thought it was a universe of idiots. Yes, but it's I a had, universe of idiots that's just an inside joke. I had a warning description to go read the other ADC verse, otherwise you're not going to get what the fuck's going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Aside from the fact that it's on a Saturday, because it's always on a Saturday. Yeah. That is the running theme of the ADC verse, is crazy shit just happens on Saturdays. Well, in this case, Discord selected a specific Saturday. <laughs> well, yes, but it's always, always, always <laughs> Saturday. Like, it's Saturday when Gummy and Boulder decided that in order to take over the world, they needed to go and sit on Chris, on, not Chrysalis' throne, <laughs> Celestia's throne. And it turns out Boulder just wanted to get inside of Celestia's, me you know, uh, metaphorical pants. It's a Saturday yeah. when suddenly the portal to the human world malfunctions and a bunny version of Twilight comes prancing through, having a panic attack and eating every single carrot she finds. That was a Saturday. It's a Saturday when Twilight decides to try and make use of an evil death altar in her basement, but it turns out to just be a fake given to her by Flim and Flam. <laughs> it's it's a Saturday when Starlight botches a spell, blasts Trixie and Luna through it, and they turn on the fill turn the fillies on the other side. They get taken to the pound and fed kibbles. It's a Saturday when Starlight borks a spell that swaps the enthusiasm levels of Maud and Pinkie Pie, so that Pinkie Pie is very monotone and uninterested. And Maud is so freaking hyper and excited that she can teleport all over the goddamn place. It's it's Saturday when the changing Twilight from Change and the <laughs> and the Twilight from um, Little, Little Glimpses. Glimpses get affected by chaos magic and so it's a good idea to fuck, fuck each themselves. Other. <laughs> Wait, what are are these events considered bad? <laughs> it, they're, the, they're considered the, weird, is what they are. Yeah. It's idiocy, but it's in the name. I I mean, you know, you, uh, Luna and Trixie being teleported there to the Philly. That sounds uh, kind of sounds bad, and that kind of sounds like it fit more on Mondays. The bad stuff usually happens on Mondays. Nah, it was Saturdays. 
<laughs> because the it show because the show the airs on Saturdays is the joke. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> Everything happens on a Saturday. And if it's, and it's always resolved in about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> they made that joke in the hundredth episode, didn't they? That's why I missed that's why I'm making reference to that. Maybe it's just a friendship <laughs> problem and it'll all be sorted out in half an hour or so. <laughs> I love Sweetie, that episode. Sweetie Belle displaying a shocking amount of self awareness. <laughs> uh, I uh, actually, uh, not, a couple of days ago, I saw the episode with uh, Ember and uh, Thorax. Triple threat. Oh, yes. I hate that one. Yes, and I noticed that um, Ember sneezes fire at Thorax, and he's just, you know, standing there on harm. I was like, oh, changes the fireproof. Yeah. He's got freaking chitin covering his body, or chitin, whatever. Well, it does you, know, you need like... a bug zapper, not fire. Yeah. <laughs> you that. yeah, if nothing else, he's fire resistant. I wouldn't say proof, but definitely resistant. Like you'd need a to keep a continuous on a shell. Yeah, like you'd need to have a significantly stronger stream hitting a changeling for significantly longer than just a sneeze and a small floof for it to actually harm them to any significant degree, except for maybe warming up their chest a little bit. Yeah. Or I'm now, sure. bear with me. A giant flaming ice water. <laughs> I'm sure an extended stream would turn their their chitin into an oven. Are you like bugs <laughs> or what? <laughs> oh boy. Yes. <sighs> yes. Fake starlight. They are bugs. You should know you are one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That, that whole escapade bugged Twilight to no end. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that one was on purpose. Oh. Yep. I am the changeling writer here. Only I get to make that joke. Well, I mean, no, because Chrysalis is in Little Choices. And I wrote The Bug in the Herd, which also has changeling in it. Blech. Blech. Yeah. Then I also saw the... I uh... would say blah, but what's blah? I don't remember. You... You ball. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Oh, you got a message from Hades. <laughs> yes, we did. Sorry, guys. I'm with a friend. That's Hades fun. has friends? What? <laughs> I mean, he's not going to appreciate that when he hears this, just so you know. We love you, Hades. <laughs> yeah, we love you too, man. Yep, enjoy your company. Yep. Enjoy what you have with you. That story. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are trapped here forever. Uh, yeah, then I think the next day I was able to see. All right. I, don't know that. I was able to see the uh, episode where Starlight and Trixie goes to visit Sorax in his hive. I ship him so hard. Yes. I love the reaction when they found out the 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 one chain the one that didn't change Lee's and everybody's like, Yay! Now the mole worm is coming. Oh no <laughs> Pharynx. Pharynx. His oh, name is Pharynx. Yeah. He is the brother. He's a bit of a dick, but sure. <laughs> On all big brothers. He's also in little choices. Yes, um, I, I have four others, two younger and two older. Sucks to be the middle child sometimes. All right, Malcolm in the middle. <laughs> you had you're to make that a, reference. You're making a reference to my reference. Of a reference. Referenceception. Uh, for anyone not in the know, uh, somewhere in uh, Soaring on Little Wings, uh, Little Wing calls Scootaloo Malcolm in the middle, and Scootaloo does not understand the joke. Oh, I thought you were talking about the TV show. That's what Little Wing was referring to. And I was referring to Little Wing, referring to the TV show. A reference to my reference. Referenceception. Yeah, there you reception. go. <laughs> and Hades is not sorry for creating our concept. Nor should he be. <laughs> <laughs> it's glorious. It's magnificent. If you say so, Tone. I say so. I know you do. You just said it. Yes. <sighs> I get the feeling we're just grasping at straws here. Yeah, just a bit, because, you know, we kind of came... This has to happen when you come in without a plan. I mean, Twilight would freaking hit us over the head of a book. And then Starlight yes. would swat that book into a lake. 
<laughs> yes. And Twilight uh, just that, that whole now, I don't think Twilight would hit us just a book. She'd hit us with a large, thick encyclopedia. That's still a book. Oh, we're too good for book. Oh, yeah, books are too good for us. Like a book, though. You wouldn't dare. A book's a book. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, th thanks for that. <laughs> Book is a book. I, I just got that. Well I just made it more complicated. <laughs> I don't know. A big book <sighs> is still a book. I've gone into detail. <laughs> a big book is still a book. <laughs> and cue the awkward silence. Right. <laughs> chirp, chirp. <laughs> You're enjoying <Yeah>. this. <laughs> I don't. Know, I, do, I doubt the audience is though, because we don't have any unifying conversation today. Um, well, we would. If two people, we would if two people would have uh, actually watched the episode and it came out. Hey, I said you guys can go ahead and talk about it. have my blessing. Yeah, same here, and I'm still working on se season seven. So, yeah, Brian. Yes. Go we ahead. Have blessing. Build your heart's content. Yeah, but. This is the show, man. It's different than fanfix. Yeah. No, it's not. Yes, it it's is. a show. Yes. One of the moving it's not Game of Thrones or anything. Just uh, talk about see. it. Uh, the show can sometimes be stranger than fanfiction. And life is stranger <laughs> than fiction. <laughs> that, that was an episode. Amen. All right, fuck it. Naysay is a goddamn racist bigot, okay? There we go. Yes, he is. <laughs> so, All right. Suppose we might as well get this out of the way since we seem to be going this route, even though I'm kind of hesitant to do so. Spoiler warning Spoiler for the season night. eight premiere. We're, we're going to be talking about the season eight premiere a little bit, so if you haven't seen that yet, fuck off, go watch it, and come back later. <laughs> well, be gentle about it, why don't you? No. <laughs> Being gentle is for pussies. You is know that what? Is that what Christmas says? A tone shift. I mean. I don't think she really says anything you know, once they've actually gotten going. And even if she would, I don't think he'd really be able to register it because his mind is in a haze. Well, I'm facepalming in real life right now. <laughs> yeah, so Stu, we're totally having sex right now. And I'm staring blankly into space. <laughs> Unintended. <laughs> anyway, yes, season eight. <laughs> so... Twilight and the gang have opened a school. And the, the episode opens immediately after the film. Yeah, and they talk about the film for, like, the whole thing just before the intro. It's like... I mean, the, the, Tempest. The, it's like, there's that awful town where we were almost sold. The pirates are still flying around. Oh, hey, Mount <laughs> Eris. Silverstream, who's the cousin of freaking Skystar and the niece of Novo, and he's... Definitely Skystar's relative, you can tell. She's, a, you know, a pinky pie. <laughs> Absolutely excited to bowl as all hell, and she loves stairs. So, so, so much stairs. If, well, to be fair, the sea ponies don't really get to flop around on stairs very much when they're, you know, actually underwater, and they only recently got to return to above life living, so... I can understand how the young ones wouldn't have ever seen stairs, but I have a question for his, like her dad, who was, um, well, he didn't the Storm King happen within his lifetime? Hard to tell. Because Novo was the one who turned them into sea ponies in the first place. Indeed. Well, it might have just been a long time for him. <laughs> like decades, like maybe he was a little kid when they ran under. Where we're going, we don't need stairs. Because we have fins. <laughs> then we have a yak who's a yak. That's the only. I, I swear, I when every time they talked about her, I thought they kept calling her Yoda. <laughs> no, it's Yoni. It's Yoni. It's, I know. It's, 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 it's Yoni. I know, but it kept sounding like like it's especially when Prince Rutherford was uh, introducing her. It sounded like he called her Yoda. It's like this Yoda yak. We have Sandbar, who's a slightly lesser version of Treehugger and the way he talks. Hey, dude, I'm really hungry. <laughs> we got my favorite, Ocellus. Ocellus! Ocellus, no. yes. Ocellus is adorable as all hell. 
the young female changeling who's really shy. Really she's shy and re really shy and kind of takes after Twilight's own heart a little bit. She actually paid attention in class. <laughs> And was able to She's a mix between season one Fluttershy and season one Twilight. She was able so to also... go ahead. Uh, so is also one of the new changelings or one of the old ones? No. Ah, all right. And she was able to identify a Pukwudgie on sight. <laughs> what? What's so funny? A Pukwudgie. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a thing. Don't laugh. They decided to terrify. They I'm decided sorry. it's a good idea to camp out in the castle to assist in every forest and get attacked by creatures they have no idea how to deal with. I'm sorry, it's just the name just is kind of funny. So Yeah, they're kind of cute until you piss them off, which apparently if you happen to have food nearby, pisses them off because they want the food and they don't want you. <laughs> yeah, you know you know, porcupines. I, I was more so liking them to hedgehogs. Yeah. The way they basically are is they're hedgehogs, except they can shoot their spines at you, and those spines are sharp enough to run all the way through an apple. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Dangerous creatures if you piss them off and they travel in packs. Oh. Of like six or seven. Maybe more. Yep. So, six or seven tiny hedgehogs shooting you with needles flying fast enough to splinter apples into dust. Are you yep. thinking of the word porcupine? Or are you saying hedgehog? For... I, I'm saying hedgehog because that's about how big they are. They're about the size of a hedgehog. Yeah, but the spines are pretty more akin to a porcupine if you've been sharper. Yeah, I suppose. <clears throat> Pork hedgehogs do have spines, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's not quite that sharp. Yeah. yeah. Either way. <sighs> yeah, and then so they so the episode starts immediately after they literally just got them back to the castle after the <clears throat> film, where they find the map is updated because of their little adventure to beat the Storm King with all the places they've been in the film. Yep, and they even they mentioned, and they even mentioned Tempest by name. Yeah, they're saying she's uh, going around spreading word of the Storm King's defeat and dealing with remnants of that and might be coming back one day. So hopefully for season nine, we get to see her again. We'll see. That would be nice. And then they open the school and it's overseen over by the head of the education system called Naysayer. And he's, well, a racist twat. Who didn't seem to understand what Twilight was trying to do with this school. She said, we're going to make a school of friendship. You're making a school to defend ponies from outside threats. No, I'm making a school of friendship. I approve your school of defending from outside threats. <laughs> and he, at the end of part one, he ends up freaking um, closing the school down. Not because of the sloppy teachers. That was just some issue that could be worked through. He closes the school down because it has non-pony students in it. Wow. <laughs> yes. And in the process, basically makes some very derogatory remarks to multiple to the leaders of these races like Thorax, Ember, like Prince Rutherford from the Yaks, one of the Novos generals, and um a Griffin dude who's just kind of the He's kind of just Gr there. Grandpa Gruff, yeah. Yeah, Gilda's grandfather. <laughs> it's like you all suck. I'm sorry? <laughs> Thorax was the only one trying to find a peaceful resolution, and everyone was getting yeah. pissy at him, too. Aren't, aren't yeah, we friends, that, um... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, son of a gun. Yeah, they almost went and had a fucking... They almost had, like, a multi-species massive fucking war between, like, changelings, griffins, hippogriffs, yaks... Dragons and, and we're not we're not right in the fucking middle. We're not just extrapolating that they literally use the word war. So that's literally says to all that if you don't fix this soon, we're gonna be at war. Yeah, well, th th we might wind up having to deal with a fucking war that we'll be caught right in the middle of. <laughs> I just remembered something. Yes. I wonder how uh you know, every jibber jabber we usually, you know, bash bash you one way or another tone. I think it's my turn to you guys have a you know, bash me. I have a little story. What does that bash you with, though? I, uh, you're not like the, you're not the one who loudly proclaimed Trixie wants blowjobs at one point. Yeah, but I am the one who's like, okay, Tone, do your lap dance. <laughs> huh? God. Last, last one, you, you, you don't remember. I do not Never remember. Mind. Anyway, um, a while, the main thing was like, last year we had some heavy rain, and it rained so hard, um, some of the critters outside 
decided to come out from their little flooded dens. A hedgehog had made it and was clinging to the side of the of the walls next to the door. And uh, little her schedule is uh, I tend to get a bit feminine when I get uh, scared. And <laughs> when I uh, saw it, I freaked out. Okay. I was screaming for my dad to get the gun. <laughs> Over a hedgehog? Yes. They're so tiny, though. <laughs> Basically, like Tone just did. Because <laughs> I am afraid of adorable. animals with rabies, which, you know, wild animals. Do you know, how mentioning... big do hedgehogs get? Yes. Okay, so I know I, I, I've got many issues. You know, mentioning animals yeah. with rabies, that actually reminds me of kind of a fun story that I kind of want to share now that I've been reminded of it. So, uh, okay, right. so few years back, my family and I lived in a different house. Uh, it was on the west side of town, kind of out there. Not a lot of traffic. Wildlife was a bit more commonplace. You know, deer and raccoons and the like. Well, one night, uh, my mother was cooking dinner, as she did at the time and still does technically to this day. <laughs> and while that was, while she was doing that, this raccoon just walked up onto the porch and propped her hoof, not hooves, her paws up on the glass and started looking in like, what you doing? Kind of thing. And mom decided to be nice and gave the raccoon some scraps. Like like kibbles or something in, a, in like a little dish. And just, Isn't there a rule that you're not meant to feed raccoons? I mean, not you around never here. Never feed a wild animal. Well, Excuse I mean, me, that's well, a horrible idea. Well, we yeah. didn't let her. Well, we set the hard rule, never let this raccoon in. But the raccoon came back the next night, and Mom fed her again. Oh, dear. And then the raccoon came that's back again. The next, idea. And then the raccoon came back again the next night, and Mom decided to name her. Mom named her oh. Charlie. So we now it had... Like it, it, it's Charlie, it's... Just what my mom came up with. And Charlie kept showing up. And mom kept feeding her. And we'd usually just... We never let Charlie into the house. And we never left the door open. Usually the extent was... Mom would open the door, put the food out, and then close the door. And and, and it was a sliding glass door. So we could still watch Charlie while she was doing her thing. And... And Charlie could just kind of became kind of like... I wouldn't say a pet, but kind of like a family friend in some ways. Because she showed up almost every night for years, it beca- it almost it actually became odd to not see her show up. Mm-hmm. And what made and what makes this kind of awesome is that after a time, she started bringing her kids. Yeah, <laughs> raccoon started bringing his kids. Yeah, Charlie started showing up with her with you know her her pups or cubs or whatever you want to call raccoon kids. And they'd show up. I mean, yeah, they were given like a steady supply of food. There's a (laughs) good reason for them to keep coming over. Yeah. (laughs) You don't do that. (laughs) Well, again, we never let Charlie or her kids in. That was the hard rule, and we never broke that. And and generally speaking, it was only at, you know, like one, it was just leftovers or a small thing of kibbles, and that was it. And eventually. Uh, but, you know, and, and, you know, this went on for a good couple years and it was just it was kind of fun. And Charlie wound up showing up with more than one bunch of batch of of cubs as, the, as those years went by. Each time the pattern seemed to be the same. There would be two decent ones and then there would be a di- you know, three decent ones and then a dick. <laughs> that always seemed to be the pattern. And so each time she showed up with kids, I'd figure out which one was the asshole and I would name him Charlie after Charlie Sheen. <laughs> and the right. uh, and the others would be Chili Chally and Chuli by mom's uh, recommendation. So you had a Chali, Chili, Chali, Chuli, and Charlie. And it just went on for a good long while. And of course, eventually we wound up moving from the west side of town to the house we were in before the current one. Uh, and when we realized we were going to do that, mom gradually tapered off the food until she wasn't putting anything out and... I don't know what became of Charlie. Kind of missed the sucker. Mm. She was cute. We were never allowed yeah. to touch her, and we knew why. It would be a dumb idea. 
But that doesn't mean that but, but it, she was still fun to have around and just watch, especially because she started to pick up some tricks, so to speak. Like, in the mornings when she'd show up to ask for breakfast, which Mom did on occasion, because Mom worked in the mornings back then, Charlie would show up to the sliding glass door, stand up on her hind legs, put her front legs on it, and then just start tapping. Just dong, 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 dong. Okay, dong, attention. Dong. <laughs> they just stopped turning up one day, so... They they stopped turning up when Mom stopped putting out food. Ah. Uh. And so I don't know what became of Charlie, but it's just kind of a neat story in that we had a working relationship with a fucking raccoon and her kids, and I thought that was kind of neat. Charlie's probably gone and died of old age by now, but, I, I mean, she was getting pretty gray in the muzzle when we finally went and left, so. Well, you're uh. lucky with the raccoons. Last time we had rac we dealt with raccoons, it was... Uh, the one camping trip me and my family went on, and a bunch of coons broke into the cooler and stole all the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Raccoons can be little thieves. Yep. I mean... <laughs> oh, my. Oh, yeah, my, my parents were unhappy about that. <laughs> I imagine. Bacon is, <laughs> bacon is great. To steal that is to break a sacred trust. <laughs> yeah, no raccoons here in the UK. Just the occasional stray cat. All right. That must be the, nice. the United of Kingdom. Yes. <laughs> grammar. Indeed. You, you, grammar. Uh, you does not has. <laughs> what are grammars? What is that grammar of which oh, spell? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you just had a stroke in the middle of that one. Your point. <laughs> I, uh, my my, my, my oh. blooper reels pretty much consist entirely of nothing but the various characters I'm voicing having strokes. <laughs> and saying the occasional weirdly promiscuous like things. suddenly becoming a man all of a sudden. But, uh, oh my goodness. For the good of all species, I will help you eat no matter how frumpy and morally deficient I find your main cunt. <laughs> God. That was one of the best bloopers I think I've ever had. <laughs> it was so goddamn unexpected, too. It just happened. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> yeah, prob probably like one brain cell of going to the Anderthal speaking way of English. <laughs> no, no it, was, it was just I, instead of saying main cut, I accidentally slipped in an N in there that should not have been there. <laughs> Oh, yeah. and, well, I, and, and I went into hysterics when I realized that's what I said. The, the bloopers I, in one of my blooper reels. Go find it. You'll laugh. I bet. I've seen some of your bloopers. They're that are funny. <laughs> so I mean, they wouldn't be bloopers if they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a weird tendency of making really weird sounds when I mess up. Oh yeah, you see my typing grammar. <laughs> I mean, you type in the Discord chat. We we we've seen. Trust me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which is pretty close which my typing in there is basically close to the intersol like man make fire <laughs> <laughs> excuse me I'm going to light you on fire good chap snick 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 <laughs> ah fire warm my hands by the fire and the man is forever warm because he's on fire Ooh, this is nice and cozy thank you for lighting me on fire good chap you're very welcome good chap <laughs> now run off and fuck that squirrel okay <laughs> and then he ran off and fucked the squirrel and I don't know why <laughs> the squirrel was very confused oh, I think he'd be a little more than confused oh yeah you're right he'd, he'd be in pieces there's no way he could fit all that oh this no comments <laughs> no, no, no comments I'm not going to say that and this is why I love this group <laughs> <laughs> we're at the we're like the blue collar gang. We can be very funny. We just don't give a shit. <laughs> well, yeah. Zero folks given. I, I wish They're I was a part solid. of that. I wish I was part of that clan. Can I just say that right now? Uh, the blue collar gang? No, the zero fucks zero gang. Fucks. Oh. Run by Soviet Womble, wow. or at least Soviet Womble's a part of it. Yeah. Soviet Womble, <laughs> a YouTube gamer and streamer and on Twitch and... All we all know people. they come. They, they go for Soviet and they stay for cyanide. It's an established fact. 
Get off my quad, boy! I cannot do Cyanide's voice. <laughs> That's just your standard terrible British accent. Ah! <laughs> it's funny. World's first Indian man in space, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 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 uh, the bullshit race user is amazing. Yeah, it's only casual racism here and there. <laughs> For anyone who's curious and doesn't know, go ahead and Google all one word Soviet Womble on YouTube. There should be a series of videos he puts out called the Bullshittery Series. Highlights from his Twitch streams where he and his buds just get up to insanity. <laughs> It'd be funny if he actually just sees this video and just listens to it and just hears this. Nobody enjoys Soviet Womble. That's how you can tell <laughs> North House, East, and West. <laughs> uh, and the sad part is, someone at Nerd Cubed fucking went and used that. <laughs> it's spreading! Yeah, the thing he, he explos- YouTube I want. I want? What? I, I watch. Yeah. <laughs> The one, uh-huh. the, one, yeah. the one thing that Soviet Womble does not want to become a thing in relation to him is becoming a thing. <laughs> yeah, he, he watches Soviet Womble and he wants to make it a thing, so he, in just one of his videos, um, I think he has more subscribers than Soviet. Like, he was just playing a completely random game, I mean, for Game Jam, I think, like, um, a thing where you're flying an airplane, I don't know what it was, but it's not important. And he just said the random... Randomly in the videos, like, all right, uh, what way's north? Uh, nobody enjoys Soviet Womble. All right, that way. <laughs> <laughs> now, I sincerely, sincerely doubt Womble's ever actually going to hear any of this, but on the, yeah. but on the off chance, chance, on the I off doubt. chance he ever hears any of this, I apologize profusely. <laughs> <laughs> We're just giving you shit, and I hope you understand that. Now then, moving on to actual things that might actually matter, because I just gave an apology to someone who's never going to hear that goddamn apology. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, the jibber jibber. Uh, you never, yeah. know, never know, one of your fans might link it to him. Tone. I mean, they might, but will he ever actually see it? Probably not. <laughs> It'd be hilarious if he did. It, it would be. It would be hilarious if he saw that, but... A reaction I'd pay for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I'm right paying for you. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are doing that. Thank you for that, by the way. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my brain's drawing a blank. You both? Not fucking. Uh, uh, <laughs> go and give me something. I haven't said anything in a while. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think it was, was it yesterday I, I called blank on blank page on that when he like oh my mind is just drawing a bunch of blanks like yeah. pun intended pun not intended oh my goodness I I've made some pretty bad puns in my in my days what I'm constantly the about I don't give a shit. <laughs> Oh, by the way, Blank actually sent me a picture. A oh, ago. yeah. Uh, I just kind of want to read off the text that's on it because it's oh. kind is of it interesting. The, is, is it the sun thing? Yes. So allow me to read this off because I think it's genuinely kind of fascinating. Uh, so the sun is probably the closest thing we'll ever have to a true eldritch abomination. Uh, hear me out here. Older than recorded <laughs> history was here longer than any of us and will be here long after we leave, has a finite beginning and end, but is still incomprehensibly ancient. It burns itself into our vision instantly and can blind you if you look for too long. Further prolonged exposure can cause cancerous growths. Non-humanoid shape is a non-humanoid shape floating through space with colossal flaming tentacles angrily lashing out on occasion. It sort of just appeared one day and it's now surrounded by the corpses of its stillborn children and people used uh, to sacrifice other people to it to appease it and that's just stupid humans and we're pretty sure it screams at us sometimes <laughs> how to misinterpret the sun and make people fear it again and start those sacrifices back up <laughs> yeah 
I could go into length about how it didn't just just appear one day, but you know, I'm sure you don't want to hear the science about nebulas. <laughs> well, well, we already understand the basics. It's just that it's like whether or not the science behind it is considered or not, the fact remains it eventually just kind of showed up. Yes, there was a process that led to it showing up, but it's kind of like, yes, everything has a process that leads to it showing up, but in the end, it, everything just kind of shows up when you b break it down enough. So uh, the universe, because that's just kind of exploded <laughs> near as we can tell until unless we actually ever develop a time machine to go back in time which we can't then uh chances are, fantasy yeah i mean well also if you went back to that time you'd probably be caught in the last universe's big crunch and they're all blown up and this universe's big bang yeah so you wouldn't be able to figure out one way or the other how the fuck anything actually came to be anyway it's a mystery right. we'll just have to live without knowing yeah, so die with the old universe or die to, to, to birth this one. I wish for your atoms will probably spawn mankind someday. <laughs> but, the yeah. paradoxes, yay. So if I had a time machine, I wouldn't do that. I'd just go back in time to the guy who was about to invent the high five and give him a high five. <laughs> <laughs> Which came and, from and, thus, and, thus, and thus and thus and thus the and thus the high five is born. <laughs> I that, that sounds the high five is the new chicken and the egg. Which came first? <laughs> Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Yes. Scientifically <laughs> speaking, it would have had to have been both at the same time, more or less, because the species that could be considered the chicken hatched from the egg of the species that was that the chicken evolved from. So, yes, the chicken and the egg both came first. It's one one day, one day they were birthed like a different way. They plodded along, and then they laid an egg. And they're probably very confused. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just a matter of when when the chick when you know the the genetics of the chicken became what we now consider to be the chicken. The first chicken that was born from that came from the egg of its predecessor, and now boom, chicken! It's a chicken, and it hatched from an egg, and now it's a chicken. So. The egg and the chicken came first at the same time. Boom, there's that paradoxical question answered right there. <laughs> and then a paradox was born. What? Okay, moving on. <laughs> yeah, man, I thought everyone was talking so much that mine just kind of blurred over. <laughs> you blew his mind. Oh, I Oof. think it just, I think it just kind of went somewhere else. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> Better than Jibber Jabber? Impossible. He went to his happy space. Yep. Did Kiss invade it? What? <laughs> Did Kiss invade your happy place and kiss your mom? I'm making a reference to Happy Gilmore. Yeah. I'm not familiar with it. No. No, no. You ever wonder why we're here? <laughs> no one no. cares. It's one of life's great mysteries, isn't it? I mean, and, and I. I'm making a reference, Tom. We. Yes, he was continuing on with the reference. Yes. No, I was referencing uh, something from RTD. Red versus R blue. Yes, yes, that's I where know. it comes from. And I was continuing the rest of it. Riff's I'm, lines. Is, how, how do you start a reference, but you don't know how it continues, man? <laughs> no. Do you I, really I don't, don't know the rest of the ever. line beyond, do you ever wonder why we're here? I don't ever wonder why we're here. <laughs> yeah, it's probably too horrifying. That's actually a variant on that same line because they make that joke a lot. They reference it a fair number of times. I mean, the truth, to be honest. It's probably right. horrifying. Man, have you ever wondered why we're here? Uh, it's one of life's great... No, not that numb nuts. I mean, here, in this base. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. The only reason we have a base in this box canyon is because they got a base over there in the box canyon as well. <laughs> you ever uh, dude, wonder... I can't remember that line well enough. Yeah, if someone asked me, you ever wonder why we're here? I'd say, no, I don't wonder because I already know. We're here because we didn't get lucky enough to not exist. <laughs> okay, taking like a sharp turn to the left with this conversation, eh? Well, what can I say? I'm yourself, I like existing. What can I say? Non-existence is my biggest fear. What can I say? I'm a nihilist. I don't see an inherent value in existing. At least Congratulations. Not... But there is a value. You're making this production. <laughs> Brian, there is a value. It's called the idiocy verse. I mean, subjectively. Never mind. I'm I mean, with Brian now. I mean, subjectively, <laughs> that has. I mean, I find personal value in that, but just because I find something meaningful or important doesn't mean it actually is. Lies and blasphemy, sacrifice, 
sacrifice. To the sun! The Eldritch Shore! <laughs> yes, to the Eldritch Abomination! <laughs> sun, but Rest shall be pleased it. with the sacrifice! I'm and then Pinkie Pie appears, appears out of nowhere. What? And then Pinkie Pie appears out of nowhere. And she starts with a teeny tiny cannon! Oh, that's an amazing part. Because she got an absolutely teeny tiny party cannon that could fit like... She could fit like 20 of them in one hoof. And then she also made, like, co color-coded cannons appear out of nowhere for yeah, yeah, everyone. Yeah, she made customized party cannons for the rest of the main cast. Did you notice in that scene, like, the main six didn't even bat an eye at that, but still, I kind of looked around kind of confused for a moment. <laughs> she's not as used to Pinky as everyone else at this point. Yep. Like, she's, like, like, she's getting there, but she's not there yet. She's still trying to... Come on. Get used to like, like she acknowledges that there's no point in trying to understand Pinky, but she's not to a point where she can just not Except. bat an eye when Pinky does crazy, crazy shit. It's still gonna catch her off guard. While everyone else is like, "What's wrong? Like, this is normal." Hard to go for all of us who meet who if we did get to meet Pinky. I mean, come on, she she regularly breaks the fourth wall, which yeah, she does. Um, is it breaking do the fourth that wall? She's scripted to break the fourth wall, though. Yes. Is it breaking the fourth wall? No, that's is simply that's, the, that's the thing. That's the thing. They don't write it, those lines. They just come to work one day and the script's been rewritten. They don't know how it happens. <laughs> they found some pink hair once on the table, but they don't know. What <laughs> the hey, that's what I said. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. I don't know what to say now. Um, well, we have just over 10 minutes to bullshit our way through, or you could end it whenever, I could, but I could make when I allow that. Which I do have something we could do. What? Um, Sorry, if you God. had to pick a pony, main six or whatever, what pony would you choose? For choose what? for what? For, for what? Choose like, for what? For, uh, maybe having as a roommate. Twilight. Uh, oh, hmm. um, that's kind of a hard one. A hard one. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I mean, it would probably, probably either be... It would probably be probably Fluttershy. That's a good choice. Yeah, this one right mostly there. because she's the most mellow of them. And I don't want things to get too insane in wherever I'm living. And, and do you know if I wind up as roommates with Twilight or any of or any of those others, shit's gonna get crazy. Hey, at least if you live with Twilight, she'll be able to do your taxes. <laughs> I mean, I haven't even had to deal with that. That reminds me of a so. video. I gotta show you. Oh my gosh. Oh god, what is it? <laughs> so remember that one show, the parody of the show that you said was giving you brain cancer with every uh, passing second? <laughs> no. I Great, you got expunged. I can show it to you again. Um, <laughs> oh, oh no, what is it? Okay. Give me, give me, me a I'm looking it up right now as we talk. Go ahead, guys. I don't know. Me, I'd probably oh. choose Colgate. Oh, I thought you meant just from Mini the main... oh, I, I, I thought, I, I, I thought you just meant among the main six. Uh, main six or any other pony, you know. Oh. Also, her name is Minuet, not Colgate. Yep. Got him. People use both the names, so... Officially, it's only Minuet. Alright. Well, they, they called her Colgate before they knew her name because her hair looked like Colgate toothpaste. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> I love you and all, but... Because she's... Last time I checked, the dentist. Yeah. Anyways. Well, I mean, that's, I the, heard... that, well, that's the popular opinion, but her cutie mark is an hourglass, which does not speak dentist to me. She has the same cutie mark as the doctor. Yes. Could mean anything. <laughs> maybe she just really likes hourglasses, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe she gets stuff done in a hourly manner. Maybe she's a timekeeper or something like like she or like she she's an organizer maybe, like a scheduler. Hard to tell. Maybe she like really likes clocks. Maybe she makes clocks. Whatever she is, she's really excitable and adorable. Check out these wings, huh? I thought we already had a that pony that that does the box. That does. Well, you can have like more than one. Yeah, well, yeah. true. Like, 
there's not that many talents someone that could be like you're gonna have overlapping talents at some point there has to be i mean starlight and there's twilight no prime example they both are talent with magic all right, I guess I'll rethink my choice. Pinky and cheese sandwich, party ponies. Oh, I know you, there's nothing against your choice. I'm just saying. Uh, well, um, yeah. Well, I'm still thinking that Colgate was what everybody else thought. <sighs> yes. <sighs> where is the thing I'm looking for? Um, hmm. nine oh, minutes it. remaining. And he has found it, everyone. See, I, I, Calm cannot, down. I could not imagine living with the Rainbow Dash. I know we'd get in a fight more than ever. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. Rarity, um... <laughs> yeah, Rarity. <laughs> well, I like Rarity, well, but she's a bit too Rarity. refined for me to live with. Exactly. Um, I'd probably, If I went to sleep today with living with Rarity, I'd probably wake up with everything gone. <laughs> Dude, All my I, stuff I, really I'm not gonna I can lie. just I can just imagine Applejack and Brian being just bluntly honest with each other constantly. <laughs> I mean, I am very blunt and I do not beat around the bush. If I think you're a retard, I am not going to be shy about it. Like, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> and I think y'all retard too. I could never get away with a, a simple lie. <laughs> Like, all right, I'm gonna go off for a bit. Going you going with your friends? No, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I I don't even know how well I'd get along with Applejack, frankly. Like like her work ethic is admirable, but she's, she's all, a workaholic. She's incredibly stubborn and very set in her ways, and that does not drive well with me. And when it comes to personal yeah. interaction, so what oh. were the limits for this? roommate choosing again does it have to be like anyone in the show or just anyone in the yeah, show anyone in the show spike totally the dude's a bro i would so do that <laughs> you know what yeah, i can do that i got it thorax nah i mean well maybe because you know me and him or well usually i'm i'm a nice person and you know in private and in public usually when no one's on my nerves i think that's a safe bet for everyone <laughs> well, most people. I mean, if you, Jun, Jun, if you don't yeah, get there, I'm a nice person, and you know he's nice. I think we'd get get along pretty well. Hmm. What about you, Blank? I just said Spike. Oh, that's right. So, <laughs> uh, Discount D and D would be amazing. <laughs> oh no, no, playing D and D and then explaining how we're gonna slay a dragon to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Actually, that reminds me of an interesting concept I had while on the shitter a couple days ago in regards to D&D. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you shared oh, where your location was. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, shit. Yeah. Bad <laughs> idea. Anyways. God, yeah. that reminds me of Dude, a two-story Okay, so the idea is that it's kind of inspired by The Last Guardian, in a way. The main notion is that the... <laughs> Uh, is that the basic function of the campaign would be the party would come across a red dragon that does not have the mind of a red dragon. In D&D, a red dragon is almost always going to be chaotic evil. In this case, it doesn't have the mind of a red dragon because its mind was sort of plucked out of it when it was still an egg and a different mind was put in place, you know, through magic and shit. And so this is a red dragon with the mind of a very excitable golden retriever. <laughs> Oh, I roll for initiative anyways. <laughs> the reason behind <laughs> this is that the is that the mage who did this, his best friend, a dog who he had managed to extend the life of with magic, was dying and he couldn't do anything more to save him. And so he decided, yeah, no, fuck that. I happen to have this spare dragon egg lying around. Let's just do a thing. And then I the... just so happen to have a spare dragon egg laying around. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Imagine hey. the... What sort of life are you living? You just have a spare dragon egg. Celestius. Maybe he went. Maybe he went. I made sure. Maybe he went and <laughs> slayed a giant red dragon and and took its egg as a prize, and the egg hadn't hatched. It's like, okay, yeah, fuck it. Let's just put my dog's brain into this dra dragon hatchling, and then dragon egg hatch. And there's a little b baby red dragon that has the oh, mind I thought we were of a. Talking about for a second there. No, and it has the mind of a. Like fucking... how she slayed a red dragon and then gave the offspring to Wiggles. No. And just has a freaking. I'm talking about D and D, not ponies, right now. 
and just had yeah. a, and just had a freaking dog's mind. And so you've got this this giant red dragon that just wags its tail and its butt behind it excitably every time it meets new people, and then runs up and starts licking them and and like making happy sounds. And the adventurers would be so confused because this would be like a level one thing, like fresh party. They go out to. Like, like they're tasked by the local mayor's like, so the mage that looks over our town hasn't reported in for a few days. Would you mind going and seeing if he's all right? And they're like, yeah, sure, let's go do that. And they go out there and they find that for one reason or another, the mage passed away and all that's left behind in his study is the is the full-grown red dragon that acts like a goddamn dog. <laughs> <laughs> And they have oh, to figure dear. and they have to figure out what do we do about this ex- absurdly friendly red dragon? <laughs> A, <laughs> please sit down, boy. We don't want to do upsies right now. <laughs> Fly us back to town. <laughs> it, I just think it would be kind of a, a funny thing because, like, you've got this big fuck off red dragon, but it's scared of fighting. Like, if someone pulls a sword on you and attacks you, it's gonna turn around and run away. Yeah. Like, like, no, 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 no. God damn it, Otis. <laughs> Otis. <laughs> You can breathe fire. Get your ass back here. Uh, again, it's the mind of a dog, so it probably doesn't realize that it can do that. <laughs> Unless it burps one day. God, like maybe man. just like maybe just if like whenever it burps or it gets the hiccups, it starts b- b- putting out fire every time it hiccups or burps. <laughs> so like it's so, like, <laughs> uh, so, like a dragon with hiccups. Every time it hiccups, oh! house just burnt down. <laughs> 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 Isn't that with the spike with the one book and the one episode with Twilicious? Tw- what? What? You know, with the one episode. I know what you're talking with, about, but I don't, when, I don't know uh, where that Twilight, like. Twilight gets a uh, owl, and on the same Twilight, episode, yes. uh, uh, there you yes. go. Um, I um, was uh, at no, I, no, I, 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 actually, actually, burns one of the pages off, if, if I remember right. Uh, when mm. when Spike has the hiccups and Green Fire pops out, that was in. The one, the pranking where, one, yeah, it was in the pranking one with Gilda. Also, Paladin, were you mixing up our Licious with Twilight Licious? Um, yes, he was. I, I, I'm pretty fun. sure it was the one episode where uh, Al wishes is, is interviewed. The episode, it, they he accidentally burns a book or something like that. Well, it probably doesn't burn; it just sends it to Celestia because he has that magic imbued in his flame. I mean, I'm pretty sure he can turn that on or off, because you know, one, because I mean, when he when he did the big uh, breathe fire thing, and uh, it's about time Twilight didn't suddenly get teleported in front of Celestia when she got blasted. No, her mane got fucked up and she got a cut on her cheek. I remember there was a where which was the episode where Spike was sending a whole bunch of scr- scrolls for one reason or another, and Celestia got buried in them. Uh, that's happened the a few Griffin times. One. That's happened. That was... Few, that was the Griffin one, and more recently, Twenty Eight Pranks Later. It happened both times. Well, no okay. Ah, uh, yeah, because remember that was a prank. Just drop scrolls with the royal seal. Where did she get that many royal seals? <laughs> <laughs> Buys it from the palace. Do you think someone would catch on that something's wrong when suddenly Ramadash, the notorious prank, is just like, I'd like to buy 7,000 of the royal seal, please? <laughs> yeah, not even real royal seal, just a basic... <laughs> just amazing mock up that Spike didn't look twice at. It's like, oh, it's, yeah, that, this is normal. Well, you know, they do friendship, re- you know, she's part of the fen- friendship uh, friendship <laughs> reports at the time, so. I can just imagine so let's just say, wait, any minute now, it's going to be a new friendship report. Any minute now, a new scroll comes in. Friendship report? Oh, no, it's just some freaking. It's just an empty, <laughs> it's, it's just a scroll that says, gotcha! <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then just another more to fall. <laughs> and then there's just thousands of them a little while later, it's like, these all say gotcha. And here's the one Spike actually meant to send me, and it says, I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> and on that note, thank you all very much for tuning in to this week's episode of Jibber Jabber. We made it. We made it. We kind of stumbled through it, but we made it. Barely. We improvised. We, we improvised, and it shows. <laughs> all, all, all the same, thank you very much for tuning in. As always, I've been your host, Skajaramas, otherwise known as Tone Shift, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.